Hi everybody, Robert Dyer and welcome, welcome to the Robert Dyer channel after Christmas countdown. Welcome friends and haters alike to a very special episode. I want to take a look at this special festive edition of the Financial Times. Okay, so let's see what's behind the second to last door, window, jail cell, whatever you want to call it, on this advent calendar. Let's see who is inside bag number 23. Holy smokers. Very appropriate for New Year's Eve. We have a very dapper Jack Skellington in the snowman form. Once again with a very Danny DeVito penguin-esque umbrella and top hat. And also this sort of uh, snow slash glitter effect. And then regular old fashioned glitter on the hat. And on the umbrella. Starting to rain out there. Big rains ahead. So another very appropriate element here. Here I've got the new improved recipe, Arnold Country Style White Bread. Now this is a long time newspaper and is in this respect of a Christmas issue is kind of a throwback to the way newspapers used to be so it's somewhat to be expected that it's a newspaper that's been around for a long time but as you can see here it says they have first of all this green color and then you see it says seasonal quiz short story food and drink and then to a lesser extent 12 days of inve investment advice that's not particularly festive but the idea of a for example a short story I remember my grandfather used to buy the Boston Globe and he said they would have a uh, very erudite literature they would publish in the Sunday editions back then I don't think they do anymore but and that's why I'm saying this is kind of a throwback. Now I very much enjoy and prefer reading actual physical newspapers. I know I'm now in the minority in this year of 2020, but I really don't like to read newspapers on the internet and I read them online as little as possible. Now I realize this is a globalist New World Order uh, point of view in this publication but what I like about it is that they have outstanding coverage of what's going on in Europe and to almost the same extent in Asia and Latin America and I think in those areas this is quite a bit superior to the Washington Post for example, which is the other newspaper that I read most often, every day in fact. By comparison, the Post did not have a very special festive edition. They have a picture that's taken in Manger Square in Bethlehem. You see the nativity scene back here and the tourists are taking selfies there. The other thing I would note about the Financial Times is that the quality of the writing tends to be superior to the average newspaper. Now most of the first section is pretty much a standard edition. The festive part is really in the second section. And then here you have the editorials.
you have the letters to the editor and here they have a cartoon for Christmas Christmas tree there in the background and then there's at least one letter here related to Christmas a man in the UK Blackpool he's remembering his Christmas in Baghdad in the 1950s very nice story there. So here we have the second section which is where the Christmas material really is and you can see the it says exclusive short story by Curtis Sittenfeld that is not really my cup of tea and it, it's quite oddly uh, the author and story are aimed more at women I think so I'm not sure I would guess that this newspaper is likely uh, quite heavily male in readership so I don't I don't really get the thinking of that but it is a story by a known author and then we have this illustration here but they're talking here on the front about reasons to be cheerful in 2020. Another thing they have on their reasons for cheer that I can agree with is Animal Crossing. They also have Taylor Swift. with the FT somebody that they sit down for lunch with at a particular restaurant in this case the unruly pig in the UK and it says what they ordered and what the prices were and here we have do bad gifts get a pass this Christmas? And you have the quiz that they talked about, the quiz of the year. Here's a sample question about the crown, about how did Donald Trump introduce LIL pump that was a certainly a memorable evening something sort of Christmas with the snow scene here in Siberia a very interesting story for me as a fan of trains but it's basically about a very slow trip across Siberia on this very interesting railroad. The Russian railroads are very interesting. Definitely something to put on your list if you're a railroad buff. You know, here's what they promised the 12 days of investing column about rich people's problems certainly hitting the target audience of this newspaper now here's something Christmas it says look into our world this year more than ever Christmas windows have become public channels of communication got this report so that's a very timely Christmas report here's another useful and relevant Christmas item etc 
accessories to buy for your bar at home for the Christmas season. Tornation Bob, take note. We're on the page 10. I have to say, this is probably the best part of the Christmas festive issue is this article about recipes of dishes that were served in England since the medieval times up until the present. Obviously they're just picking out highlights. You're covering hundreds and hundreds of years there. Here they say we have the Victorians in large measure to thank for Christmas, or at least the version of it that we celebrate today. After all, they were the ones who, encouraged by the Christmas crazy royal family, religious fervor and economic growth, normalized present giving, Christmas trees, crackers, Father Christmas, chocolate boxes and Christmas cards and critically the traditional Christmas dinner but they go back earlier than that to the medieval times here they say medieval festivities were celebrated over 12 days with feasts and games and the boar's head was the primary centerpiece and they talk about how it was served, the recipe. Then the Elizabethan era is quinine. I don't know how you say that. It says a jelly made from boiled quince and sugar. And this is what they show it as. Looks pretty good. And then here it talks about the mince pie, an earlier version. As the, it says about in 1615, the cookbook, the English housewife calls for a leg of mutton with some orange pills sliced and great raisins and prunes. Then the Georgian period, the Twelfth Night Cake, a Leaven Fruit Cake. And then, very similar to the King Cake in New Orleans, it says they put a bean inside, and whoever ends up with it is King of the Bean, allowed to rule over everyone for a night and make their subjects perform pranks and tasks. And here's the Victorian era, the Yorkshire pie, a beast of a pasty, and it has all kind of meat inside, and a hot crust pastry. And also another interesting thing here, it says in large homes, that all through the Christmas season the dining room sideboard would have pickles, hams, pressed tongue, brawn, spiced beef and cheese. And it says without central heating, rooms were cold enough for food to sit out without spoiling. So these delectable treats were on hand for grazing and could be used to feed any unexpected visitors. Here we get to the 20th century and they're talking a lot about chestnuts, which they show here people buying hot chestnuts only three years after the end of World War II in London there's the man selling them and there they are in the big kind of a pot there and it says in this 1925 cookbook chicken liver and chestnut sandwich 
and chestnut salad and after dinner hot chestnuts and prunes sugar lemon juice and a wine glass full of sherry served hot in a silver dish and then here in the 60s it says rationing was over in the UK penguins made out of boiled eggs and black olives and down here by golly they show it to you something you probably could make very easily at home and the other appetizing thing that mentions is ham cornets slices of ham rolled into cones piped with pate de foyer bechamel sauce sherry and cream so very nice informative article nice photographs probably the best feature in here the editor of the weekend magazine in this paper imagines a fantasy Christmas dinner with Edith Wharton, James Baldwin, Moses, Shonda Rhimes, and Alice Roosevelt Longworth. Now that's somebody fascinating if you look her up on the internet. Probably one of the most interesting characters in 20th century American history. And also at the dinner are the Muppets. And it talks about the menu, etc. Certainly a Christmas theme report. This is the short story. Zoom in there. It's another one of the actual Christmas theme they have every weekend in here. They talk about a song and who's covered it and the background on it. This particular edition is about the Ramones and I had no idea this song was written in Christmas 1977 in a London hotel. It mentions how they were essentially just trapped there for a number of days and that's where this song was written. So a very nice Christmas related edition of this column. And then finally we have the we have an artwork here by a Scottish artist Bruce McLean. Very modern type of art. This is a column about celebrating Christmas full steam even in a year like this. And finally we have probably the best columnist in this newspaper not a Christmas themed uh, column unfortunately but his columns are usually not only very well written but he has a little more of a uh, he's a little more awareness of what's really going on than a lot of the columnists in this newspaper he doesn't necessarily agree with it, but he acknowledges what some of the uh, blowback is against globalism.
But that's about it. We've got some uh, great English furniture here if you're in the market. So, and there we have it. The special festive edition of the Financial Times. I just appreciate the fact that some publication is still going to the effort to provide an extra value of a Christmas edition as well as the overall excellent writing and coverage. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and bump it up from three stars to four stars out of five. Certainly worth picking up on uh, Christmas Eve every year if you can get it in your area. Hope you like this video. Share it with your friends. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time tomorrow on this After Christmas Countdown. Bye everybody.